Good morning, everybody. My name is Erin Olson. And as uh, Chris uh, said, I am the Director of Strategic Research for Real-Time Talent. I've been with the organization since we were founded back in the fall of 2015. And my background spans housing, health, education, refugee resettlement, and workforce development. Um, I really come at this topic from a holistic perspective. Um, our organization works across every sector. So we don't only focus in transportation, uh, but we also work in uh, every sector that is important to our state, everything from healthcare to manufacturing, uh, to finance uh, and IT and beyond. So uh, for those of you who are not as familiar, perhaps with real-time talent, we're an employer-led public-private collaborative that is committed to aligning Minnesota's workforce. So we work with partners across industry, workforce development, education, and training to understand talent supply and demand issues and help facilitate those market-oriented solutions to critical talent challenges. We are so grateful for Minnesota State's long partnership with us as a founding board member of ours and longstanding leader in leveraging labor market data to inform programming, curriculum, and so much of the work that they do. So special thanks today to, uh, of course, Minnesota State, State's uh, uh, Transportation Center of Excellence for imagining this work and uh, partnering with us to do this specialized report on transportation pathways. It's um, just been such a privilege and so, uh, so much fun to really dig into this data. Uh, so back in 2016, uh, Real-Time Talent first sought to quantify Minnesota's labor shortage and what it would take to close the gap that we were beginning to experience. We were seeing that the labor pool was getting tight and we we're on the cusp of this great shortage of talent. And this work became the foundation of our narrative truly until the pandemic hit. By the end of 2019, we were already clearly experiencing this talent shortage. Statewide at that point in time, the overall shortage was forecast to hit about 317,000 workers by 2025. Um, and this was the really the number of workers that we anticipated we would be short uh, to maintain the then current economic output for our state. So that's not even to mention some of the educational gaps, the skill gaps and the geographical mismatches that we see across many sectors and saw at that point in 2019. And today we find ourselves talking about a very different set of issues than this shortage headline that we had heard so much about since 2015. Now we're talking about these massive rates of unemployment and dropping labor force participation rates. And even in a best case scenario for our state, uh, it could take an estimated two to five years for us to get back on track to those employment numbers uh, close to our baseline forecast and what we, we thought they might be um, in the near future. So the labor market upheaval of the pan that the pandemic has brought uh, really introduces uncertainty into our workforce and education systems around how much talent there is truly demand for, both in the short and long term. And we're in the midst of some really dramatic changes, not only in our health, health systems, social fabric and political systems, but also in sustained strain on critical industries and the role of technology in the workplace across all sectors. So we're not going to try to bite off all of these issues today. Instead, of course, we are focusing in on transportation roles and where we see critical workforce trends and new opportunities emerging, how this particular sector may see growing demand for new talent in some essential occupations. Of, again, of course, how COVID-19 has impacted the transportation sector in the short term, as well as how it could impact in the mid to long term. Finally, I'll highlight some of the top employers and key skills that are continuing to see demand for tr transportation talent across Minnesota. I will note that um, you know, the, the content that we'll share today is part a, of a, a series of reports on six of the uh, key uh, transportation pathways that the Transportation Center of Excellence uh, really supports. And um, these six pathways, um, automotive technology, aviation, collision repair, uh, diesel equipment and truck, marine and power sports, and truck driving, you know, really uh, focus in on some of those key occupations. Of course, there are also specialty roles, technology education. Um, th those are very important additional sectors um, to, to keep in mind within transportation as well. Um, 
the, there is a very extensive report also available on the Transportation Center of Excellence's website. I encourage you to go and take a look, download that data, dig into it in further detail, um, because to be totally honest, in a 40 minute presentation, we won't be able to cover um, nearly 70 pages of, of data. So uh, if something piques your interest, I encourage you to take a look there for more information. Um, so this is truly just the tip of the iceberg today when it comes to the information that was uncovered in these reports. Uh, you'll find additional um, data on certifications, further skills, where those employers are posting opportunities, and how that industry to occupation mix looks in Minnesota, uh, really from the very midpoint of what we've seen in the COVID-19 pandemic thus far through to today. So um, we... Uh, I also want to just share that uh, most of the data that comes from in this report where we're looking at the, um, the specific occupations and industries in demand, that's pulling from Bureau of Labor Statistics data, and we have worked to modify those forecasts using uh, Shimmer economics modeling tools, such as Jobs EQ for, for much of that. Uh, anything that's job posting data is coming from um, a job posting aggregator tool from Gartner called Talent Neuron Recruit. So if you're interested in learning more about those sources, our work, or about how this type of analysis could also be applied to other sectors, please do not hesitate to reach out to me after this presentation. I'd love to um, just share more about those sources of information, how we do our analysis, or those sources at any time. So uh, next, I'd like to jump right in to the content of the report. So um, there is a reason why these reports really follow the career pathways within transportation roles, rather than highlighting the transportation and warehousing industry as a whole. So in short, although it's important to note that the industry of transportation and warehousing um, it is one of the top five industries with highest job growth over the past five years in Minnesota, um, there, there are, it only truly employs a segment of the whole transportation workforce in our state. There are some other industries that really do heavily rely on talent in transportation um, in, order to, um, in order to thrive. So as you'll see in the slides that follow, a large share of individuals working in a transportation pathway or function are employed in industries perhaps outside of the formal transportation industry. In fact, construction, manufacturing, and even healthcare and retail trade rely heavily on these career pathways. So here on this slide, I've just visualized a couple of those detailed four-digit um, industries, if you're familiar with NAICS codes, um, that employ transportation talent. About 10.4% of the total workforce employed in a transportation function area is working in general freight and trucking. 6.2% uh, work in school and employee bus transportation, 6.3% in automotive repair and maintenance, and 4.1% work in um, automobile, automobile dealerships. You'll also see here that the seventh largest employing industry of transportation talent are restaurants and other eating places at 2.5%, which may come as a surprise to some. Um, but uh, of course, as you consider the importance of logistics and transportation in um, getting uh, food products to their sources, um, it's absolutely critical to that industry to have, um, have a solid talent pipeline of, of transportation talent. And so further dissecting the transportation sector into those six career pathways identified today, um, it is truck driving, which employs the largest share of talent um, under the transportation sector as a whole, employing about 100,000 workers in truck driving occupations statewide. As you can see in this quick snapshot here, and I apologize if it's a little small on your screen, uh, but there's great diversity in the average wages by pathway, the unemployment rate that's estimated as of the second quarter of last year. So right in that midpoint of what we were, where we were really feeling the effects of the, the pandemic pandemic, and the volume of jobs advertised online in a given month. Job growth over the past five years has also varied significantly between these pathways, from 1.2% average annual growth in the marine and power sports pathway, which saw a very steady increase in overall employment over the past five years, to a low of um, uh, 
0.5% decline in collision repair pathway employment since 2015. So looking forward the next five years, there's a range of anticipated demand for re replacing talent that's likely to retire or exit positions or transfer into other roles. Five of the six pathways here are forecast to see some employment growth from where they sit in the second quarter of last year based on what we see in current, current demand and our best estimates right now based on what the COVID-19 pandemic has done to our workforce demand. So uh, for the next 30 minutes or so, I would like to walk us through some of the key takeaways in each of these six pathways. And I do anticipate that we will have time for questions and discussion at the end of the presentation. So please feel free to add any questions that you have or comments into the chat for review and discussion at the close of the presentation, or feel free to hold on to your thoughts to share in person at that point in time. And so let's kick off the deep dive with automotive technology. Professionals in automotive technology work in positions that range from automotive service technicians to even farm equipment mechanics, serving industries as diverse as uh, navigational manufacturing and automobile, and automobile dealerships. In all, about 22,000 people work in automotive technology roles in Minnesota as of the second quarter of 2020. It has relatively low unemployment compared to overall employment trends in other occupations at just 3.2% um, in that second quarter of 2020. And it has the second highest total employment among these six transportation pathways that we looked at. Over the next five years, total employment in Minnesota is projected to expand by about 49,000 jobs under official baseline forecasts that, um, that um, align with kind of the, the official employment outlook that was put out by DEED that aligns with the Bureau of Labor Statistics data. But when we account for the impacts of COVID-19 and some of the shifts that we've seen in declines in, in overall employment uh, just over the past eight to nine months, um, we actually anticipate that up to about 90,000 um, additional um, individuals um, may be needed uh, to enter into roles, either new jobs or in replacement roles um, in this sort of optimistic COVID-19 uh, scenario that we've run through um, it, and this, I should note, uh, for all of these examples that you're seeing on this screen with this um, deep V, this is our best uh, forecasted scenario uh, for the impacts of COVID-19. So this is a relatively optimistic forecast, um, assuming or understanding a full rollout of the vaccine process in quarter two of this year. Um, and as you can see here, we're looking at economic recovery by late 2023 as a result of those rollouts. But of course, forecasts are always our best estimate as of today's understandings. Um, it is unable to take into account any future changes or impacts of, of other variables that might come into effect. So this is something that we as an organization are updating quite regularly. I'm sure if we were to do this presentation in a month or two, we would probably have some updated numbers to share with you at that point in time. So, um, so currently under, under this uh, forecasted timeframe in automotive technology, uh, we anticipate that growth in jobs is actually anticipated to remain flat or drop moderately here in Minnesota, but just by, uh, by just under maybe 100 jobs or so. So it's uh, from where we sat at uh, quarter two 2020, um, despite the dips, we're, we're anticipating relatively um, consistent numbers of employment. And this is the only of the six pathways where we saw that flat or slight decline in overall employment numbers out the next five years. So in all, about 43% of positions that were held in the second quarter of last year will need to be filled by new talent over the next five years due to job changes, retirements, or job exits. And in every pathway um, within transportation, we see a huge need for, for what we 
called replacement um, of, of that talent that is retiring or leaving their position. So while we may or may not see dramatic numbers in overall job growth, there are still certainly thousands of jobs that are opening up that need new talent to enter into those roles. So of all occupations found in automotive technology, specifically mechanical engineers and mechanical engineering technicians are uniquely concentrated in Minnesota to a higher degree than what we see in the nation overall. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see those occupations that are included under this pathway. Uh, overall, um, automotive technology careers pay about $60,100 um, $60,100 per year, which is about uh, $4,000 higher than the average wage that we see statewide across all types of positions. Automotive technology talent is primarily concentrated in that automotive repair and maintenance industry, about well, just under a quarter of all um, talent in that area is working in that industry. Um, there about 20% or so work in automobile, or automobile dealerships, uh, but as you can see, they're important across a wide range of transportation, manufacturing, and agriculture sub-industries as well. As shown in the pie chart in the center of your screen, about 90% of people who are employed in automotive technology in Minnesota work for private employers, while about 7% uh, or so are self-employed. The remaining 3% work for state, federal, or uh, local government entities. By 2025, it's likely that Minnesota will see a growing share of mechanical engineers and mechanical engineering technologists and technicians shown in red here um, in shortage. Looking out the next 10 years, all but one occupation in this automotive technology pathway are anticipated to experience talent shortages. This means that our talent supplies that are coming through our, um, our educational and training systems may not meet the full employer demand over the next five to 10 years. And so there's some work to do to help ensure that the talent supply that we have is aligning with local employer need. So on the left-hand side, I've provided you with some job posting data. And again, this is coming from Gartner, Talent Neuron Recruit aggregated job posting data that has um, essentially been scraped from uh, thousands of online job boards in our state. It's been deduplicated um, and uh, concisely organized to help us get a sense of the volume of job postings in um, automotive technology. And so these numbers are reflective of uh, the time frame from November 1st, 2019 through the end of October 2020. So it's a full year period that has about squarely half of that time impacted by COVID-19. And so during this, this uh, time period, um, there were just under 7,000 new jobs advertised in automotive technology here in Minnesota, which was a decline of about 15% from the prior 12 month periods. We did see a drop in job postings for automotive technology um, in line with what we s saw overall across many other, other sectors. Some of the top skills that were advertised by employers in um, postings for automotive technology talent included things like dedication, engineering, design, manufacturing, and communication. Certifications may not come as a surprise, but um, Class D driver's license, automotive service excellence uh, certification, um, OSHA, um, a number of certifications really rise to the top as requirements for many positions within this pathway. On the next slide, we will um, continue with uh, digging into a highlight of the aviation pathway. Uh, professionals in aviation work in roles from piloting to air traffic controlling and aircraft maintenance technician positions. In all, as of the second quarter of last year, there were about 6,377 people working in aviation roles in Minnesota. Over the next five years, total employment in Minnesota is projected to expand or grow by at least uh, 49,000 jobs or up to, as we see in this model here, up to about 89,792 um, people employed in this pathway. Um, 
in general, aviation has the highest forecasted average annual growth among all of the transportation pathways, primarily due to an anticipated strong recovery after the effects of the pandemic in this industry. Of course, much this is one of those industries that uh, really paying close attention and really um, seeing how things play out is, is absolutely critical. Um, at this point in time, there is still the anticipation that demand will, uh, will remain after, um, after we have that rollout of the vaccine and, um, and, and some of that industry is able to um, rebound. During this time frame, um, growth at aviation jobs is anticipated to rise moderately here in Minnesota by um, up to about 220 total jobs. We may likely need about 3,250 professionals just needed to fill positions uh, that are exited by people who are going into retirement, shifting into other roles, or exiting the workforce. So overall, this pathway actually has the lowest unemployment of all the transportation pathways that we looked at, um, at just 2.5% during the second quarter of last year, despite that drop off of total employment as observed in that time. Um, it also is the highest average annual um, wage of all the transportation pathways at about $94,000 per year by 2019 estimates. So this is about $40,000 higher than the average wage statewide across all positions. On this next slide, you'll see um, all of those occupations that are included under aviation. Um, the specific occupations of airline pilots, co-pilots, flight engineers, and air traffic controllers all are uniquely concentrated in, in a higher degree here in Minnesota than what we see on average in other states across our nation. Aviation talent is primarily concentrated in the scheduled air transportation industry. About 56% of all talent is employed in that particular industry. But again, as you can see, critical to a wide range of um, aerospace, air transportation, and manufacturing um, sub-industries across our state. About 82% of people employed in aviation uh, roles in Minnesota um, work uh, for private employers, as you can see here, and about 17% work in government roles. When it comes to talent shortages here in aviation, uh, there are several core occupations that we anticipate seeing shortages in Minnesota for just in the next five years. Aircraft mechanics is uh, one, service technicians another, and pilots. So you can see here in red that uh, there are six key positions in this pathway where we will see we'll see shortages. And um, if we look out the next 10 years, right now in our forecast, we, we only anticipate those shortages to grow with our current setup of our current talent supply. So there's some, some work uh, to be done there to address the needs of our, our industry partners. Um, between November 1st, 2019 and October 31st, 2020, there were 634 new aviation jobs advertised online in Minnesota, which was a decline of about 6% from the prior 12-month period. So not as dramatic as a drop-off as we saw in automotive technology, but still a decline from what we'd seen prior in terms of overall employer demand for those roles. Uh, top uh, skills in this uh, pathway include, again, operations, but also troubleshooting, security, supervision, mechanics. Uh, many of the certifications that rise to the top are um, have some similarities with what we see across other uh, transportation pathways, but having that aircraft maintenance technician certification is one that really um, is unique to this particular pathway. Collision repair um, is the third pathway that we'll, we'll highlight today and uh, marks us getting about halfway through the pathways here. Uh, professionals in this pathway work in roles from auto body uh, repair, glass installers, auto body painting, uh, service, uh, serving industries from navigational manufacturing to automobile, uh, automobile dealerships once again. In all, about uh, 6,880 people worked in collision repair roles in Minnesota as of the second quarter of last year. 
Um, and here in Minnesota, we have a higher concentration of collision repair talent than what we typically see nationwide. So once again, we're unique um, in our nation in the um, concentration of these roles here. Over the next five years, total employment in Minnesota is projected to grow. Um, in, in, these, um, in these roles, in our likely forecast here um, using the COVID-19 impact modeling, collision repair is um, the pathway that could have the largest possible change in employment trend from what we um, observed over the past five years. So on average, over in the past five years since 2015, employment in this pathway declined by 0.5%. And so notice the dip in the chart on your screen. And just despite a noticeable hit to these occupations during the pandemic, we do actually anticipate total employment to recover in employment volumes observed in 2019. So we'll actually um, see a 0.4% possible um, annual employment growth averaged out over the next five years. So uh, total demand, um, you know, we, we see about um, 3,732 roles that will need to be refilled due to job exits, transfers, retirements, job changes. And that represents about 52% of all positions that are currently employing collision repair talent. So if you think about the fact that just over half of all the existing talent in this pathway uh, may need to have new talent fill those roles, that's pretty significant. That's a that's a, a large body of talent um, that needs to be addressed in a short amount of time. Of all of the occupations that are found within collision repair, uh, the specific occupations of coating, painting and spraying machine setters, operators and tenders of automobile glass installers are uniquely concentrated here. And um, as you can see in the list on the right, collision repair talent is primarily concentrated in automotive repair and maintenance industry at about 46% of all talent in this pathway being employed there. But again, important across many different sub industries. About 95% of people working in these roles work for private employers, while about 4% are self-employed based on data that we have um, regarding uh, uh, tax reporting and such for, for individuals who are self-employed or have a, um, a LLC um, established. May not capture everyone who might be working independently or uh, individually without having, um, uh, having uh, sufficient income to be reporting those taxes. And it would also not necessarily uh, count individuals who have their own business and have employees. That, so I wanted to make note of that because sometimes when people see that it can be a surprise for some of our transportation sectors. In collision repair, um, by 2025, so just for short five years away, we may see a, a small to moderate shortage of automotive body repairers, which is shown in red to the right. Um, and a moderate surplus of auto body painters. However, looking out the next 10 years, all occupations in this pathway are anticipated to experience talent shortages based on our current supply and the anticipated retiring and aging out of our workforce in this, in this group. So overall, there were about 885 new jobs in collision repair that were advertised in Minnesota between November and October. Um, 2020, a decline of about 25% from what we saw in the prior 12 month period. So of the three pathways we've looked at so far, this saw the greatest decline in overall demand indicated by employers in postings um, in this year long period compared to the prior year. Moving uh, forward into um, the diesel equipment and truck pathway. Uh, we're here we're talking about truck mechanics, diesel specialists, crane operators, and farm equipment mechanics, just to name a few of the occupations in this area. In all, about 13,250 people worked in this pathway in Minnesota as of mid-year last year. And so as you can see here, employment volume has been increasing statewide since uh, late 2015. And these positions are particularly highly concentrated in Minnesota, once again. 
So during this time frame, opportunities in diesel equipment and truck jobs are anticipated to grow um, by about 307 total jobs. So we do anticipate that we will continue to see growth in employment in these occupations, despite that dramatic dip. You'll see that this V and the impact of COVID-19 is particular, particularly um, intense here, uh, but that, that recovery V um, may actually be a little bit um, earlier than what we've seen in some of the other, the other pathways so far. Uh, we anticipate that just under 7,000 professionals may be needed to fill positions that will be open due to job exits and transfers, representing uh, nearly half of the total employment in this pathway. So once again, um, significant replacement need here. Um, drilling down into those specific occupations in the pathway, on the left-hand side of your screen, um, you'll see all of the occupations that we've included in this, in this pathway and the range of the different average annual wages uh, for, for those occupations as of uh, 2019's employment uh, wage numbers. On average, we see that careers in this pathway pay about $54,600 per year, which is about $2,000 less than the average wage statewide across all positions. But again, there's significant variation when you get into those occupations themselves. About 84% of people employed in this pathway work for private employers with about 12% working for state, federal, or local government. And the remaining 4% or so are, um, are self-employed. Digging into where we might see shortages, um, it, you know, here in Minnesota, we may have a small shortage of bus and truck mechanics, mobile and heavy equipment maintenance workers, crane and tower operators, farm equipment mechanics, and rail car repairs shown in red here. You'll, you'll notice that there are not occupations in this pathway where we anticipate a surplus. Uh, we anticipate that all occupations in this pathway will have some uh, small uh, shortages or are supplying the right amount of talent right now to meet with employer demand over the next five years. Um, when we look out 10 years, these shortages that you see here are anticipated to grow uh, to two to three times uh, the volume you see here. So um, growing shortages over as time goes on. So important to start building that pathway and increasing talent now as, as possible. Again, uh, on the left, we have job posting data uh, that um, shows there were just under 7,000 new jobs advertised in the diesel equipment and truck career pathway between November 1st, 2019 through October 31st, 2020, which was an increase of 22% from the prior 12 month period. So despite some of the challenges and the, uh, the significant impacts that we saw to overall employment, employers had a really mixed um, experience um, is, what, is what we're seeing in this mix of data that while there were some immediate impacts to the employment situation for individuals in this pathway, employers still needed talent in, in perhaps other places and in other ways. So this is somewhat reflective of some of the supply chain challenges that we saw playing out, especially in those early months of the pandemic as well, um, as well as um, some of the initial um, boost in job postings that we, we saw at the, at the close of 2019 and January, February, 2020 as well. So remember that this does have a front end that was pre-pandemic as well. Um, and uh, next, Marine and Power Sports, we're coming up on the last two pathways here. I hope you're all taking your um, taking notes, uh, adding your questions to the chat if possible, um, so that we can we can have a good discussion uh, once we wrap up the content. And I apologize for sort of rolling through this a little bit quickly. Uh, I know there's a lot we could discuss in each of these pathways, but I want to make sure that we have the chance to uh, to talk at the end of, of the presentation. So marine and power sports covers roles uh, from industrial equipment maintenance to outdoor power equipment maintenance and small engine, motorboat, and motorcycle mechanics, to name a few of the occupations here. In all, about 5,350 people work in marine and power sports roles in Minnesota as of the second quarter of last year, 
we saw a steady rise in employment uh, over the past five years in this particular um, pathway. Um, we, so during this, uh, the past five years, um, oh, no, I'm sorry, over the, the, the next 10 years, um, growth is anticipated to um, continue, but moderately. As you can see, there was a significant impact to this pathways employment um, due to the pandemic and that recovery is anticipated to be a lot um, more spread out, a bit slower than what we saw in some of the other pathways thus far. It's more of kind of a U, uh, an open U shape than what we saw in that deep V in the last um, set of slides. Um, so that moderate growth is about 62 um, total um, additional people employed averaged out over the next five years. So um, total demand is anticipated to be around um, 3,275 uh, 3, professionals needed to fill positions due to job exits and transfers, um, including retirements. So that's nearly two thirds of all the talent employed as of the second quarter of last year. So this is the um, pathway where we see some of the um, largest volume of job exits, potential retirements, shifts within that labor market that require new talent to come in. So this happens to be also one of the pathways here that is one of the more volatile where this is sort of a trend that we do see um, not only now, not only um, due to the conditions that we're in right now, but even prior to this, that we did see that this has a lot more replacement need than some of the other pathways. So of all occupations found in this pathway, specifically automotive and watercraft service attendants, outdoor power equipment mechanics, and motorboat mechanics are uniquely concentrated here in Minnesota. Uh, in comparison to what we see in other states across our nation. On average, uh, careers in this pathway pay just under $41,000 per year, um, varied uh, significantly across these occupations, as you can see on the left here. It also varies quite a bit across our state. So different regions of our state, different communities across our state, different employers have a wide range of offered salaries, wide range of what those salaries look like within, within those companies. So this is one that has a lot of variability uh, where it's important to kind of recognize some of those nuances rather than just relying on averages. About 94% of people employed in uh, this pathway in Minnesota work for private employers, while about 2% uh, estimated are self-employed. The remaining 4% work for state, federal, or local government entities. So uh, diesel, or uh, sorry, marine and power sports talent is primarily employed in uh, gasoline stations, automotive repair and maintenance industry and other motor vehicle dealers industries. But as you can see, these are small percentages here where in some of the other sectors or other pathways, we saw around 50% or around 40% in a particular industry. Here, the largest uh, concentration of marine and power sports talent is only um, like 12.7%. In, in that sub industry. So very spread out across a number of different industries here. Um, so wide variability in the types of employers that are looking for talent too um, in, in, this, um, in this area. We actually saw job posting volumes in marine and power sports increase by about 10% from um, from that prior year period. You can see that variety of types of employers that are looking for talent that have these skills that are um, the occupa and occupations within this pathway. Um, on the right hand side, you'll see that just two occupations under this pathway are anticipating very, very small shortages. And this is one of the pathways where we do see that there are occupations that may have a surplus of talent when we look out the next five and 10 years. Um, so, um, in general, outdoor power equipment and other small engine mechanics um, will, does join the list of occupations with likely shortage when we look out 10 years beyond. Um, it's probably a little small and hard to read what else is on this list, I'm, I'm realizing now. Uh, occupations of shortage include motorboat uh, mechanics and service technicians and motorcycle mechanics in that five-year time frame. But in, in numbers smaller than, than 10 
individuals per year. So pretty close alignment with the, the needs in our state currently. And finally, professional truck driving. Um, this last transportation pathway that we'll highlight today includes heavy truck drivers, tractor drivers, bus drivers, sales truck drivers, and tank car drivers uh, that serve a variety of industries. In all, about 99,222 people work in truck driving roles here in Minnesota as of the second quarter of last year. Over the next five years, opportunities are anticipated to grow by about um, just under 3,000 total jobs. Uh, total demand by uh, for truck driving talent is anticipated to be around 61,000 professionals. Um, the majority of these, of course, um, needed to fill positions due to, due to job exits and transfers, such as retirements and job changes. So this pathway is quite a bit vulnerable to technology innovation and transportation as we look at self-driving vehicles, supply chain impacts, changes in, how, um, in, in the demand for this type of talent um, in the years ahead. So again, another pathway really to be paying a lot of attention to um, as we look forward the next five years and beyond. Of all occupations found in this pathway, passenger vehicle drivers are uniquely concentrated here in Minnesota to a higher degree than what we see in other states nationwide. On average, truck driving careers pay about $43,000 per year, which is below that average uh, wage statewide across all positions. But again, if you, um, uh, if you dig into the details by, um, by region or by employer, there is variability there. However, when we look across all the occupations, there's less of a range in, in, um, in the average wage just averaged out across these different types of occupations in this pathway. So a little bit, um, little bit tighter um, wage range by occupation. As shown on the far right of your screen, the truck driving pathway is, um, talent is primarily employed in the general freight trucking industry at about 15%, but it's, um, but again, 15% is a very small percentage compared to what we've seen in some of these other transportation pathways. And you'll see uh, restaurants and other eating places, grocery and related product merchant wholesalers also heavily relying on professional truck driving talent for um, core functions of those industries. About 84% of people employed in truck driving occupations in Minnesota work for those private employers, while about 10% work for uh, government employers. Nearly 6% are self-employed. And um, finally, to close out the data slides, um, I, just giving you that high level picture of where we're seeing some of the shortages and potential surpluses in professional truck driving. We anticipate that in the next five years, uh, we will likely see some shortages in the heavy uh, and tractor trailer truck driver occupation field. Less than 20 individuals short um, technically over, over um, in each year over the next five years. So relatively small shortage in, in general, but still um, there will be, will be a need to address a shortage of talent for, um, for truck drivers. Looking out the next 10 years, right now based on, you know, if, if all things were to remain, um, remain current, uh, we did not see dramatic changes in what the roles and responsibilities are for, um, for talent or technological innovation um, impacting the function of those roles. This shortage of the heavy and tractor trailer truck drivers could increase by nearly tenfold. So um, there, you know, either we need 10 times that, um, that talent um, or there will be um, significant changes as we do anticipate will happen to, um, to how technology and innovation impact um, efficiency and ability to um, transport projects, deliver, deliver products um, via ground. So um, really interesting career pathway, all things said. Uh, when we look at job postings, volume of postings from November through October of this past year increased by 16%. Uh, so we saw more postings um, recently um, compared to in 2019. And that's been a trend we've seen um, just 
massive, massive increases in job postings in general um, across the, the truck driving pathway. Um, as far back as 2015, when our organization started, this is a trend we've seen. Um, and you can see from the list of, of employers and the change in volume of postings that they advertised in this period, just compared to one year prior, you can see that some of those increased by threefold, fourfold, um, very large increases in volumes of uh, just the professional truck driving talent that they're looking for.